Okay, so a happy Friday to everyone. Today is Frequently Asked Questions about honeybees for backyard beekeepers. And we're going to talk about a couple of important things that people have been wondering for a while. In this video, we're going to talk about how to remove your flow supers for winter, how to get them cleaned up, and also we're going to talk about how to get bees out of those honey supers so that you can remove them and put them on a robbing station maybe if that's what you want to do to clean up. It's only 49 degrees Fahrenheit here today, and I'm also going to explain to you how I test my honey to verify the water percentage. So what we're looking at right here, that is my robbing station that I put out this year, and it is upwind to the west of my apiary. And also, we have brought in a lot of honey this year. It's been a fantastic year for honey, and this is flow honey, of course comes from the flow supers and we need to talk about how to get those supers off because we don't leave them on for winter these are my feeder shims so that leads me to another discussion there's a rapid round feeder in there you may recall if you've been watching any of my videos that we put vents in them guess what the bees did the bees used propolis and closed up each and every vent in every single feeder shim that I put on so bee weaver bees, saskatrass bees, it didn't make a difference. They all sealed all upper entrances. So we're not going to vent the upper boxes for wintertime this year. We're going to let them use just the bottom entrance. Now I'm pulling hives apart, so I want to use smoke. And on the left here we have a flow super at the top, and on the right we're going to leave that one intact. And that's the one I pull my medium supers off of and use them at the robbing station to keep these bees under control. How do we get the bees out of the super? We use Honey Bee Gun. At least that's what I'm using now. There are a lot of different companies that put out oils that bees don't like. And you can use a fume board, which I'm gonna demonstrate. And that will get the bees out of the super so you can pull it off. And you really want to do that. Also, we're looking at uh, my feeder shim. The bottom was rough cut lumber. We put those on this year. And look at that, all the rough surfaces have propolis on them. And look at the feeder hole. They sealed that rapid round right in there and they built their honeycomb right up. And uh, here again, we're showing those vents. What a waste of time. Although, if they need venting later, they can certainly chew them open. But if we put on vents on the top going into winter, they don't have time to get out there and get the propolis that they need to seal it up if they want to. So if we're looking at the bees' behavior and we're seeing how they're voting, they're voting for no upper venting at all. So that's what I'm going with this year and we'll see how that goes. And we will of course put those uh, feeder shims back on. Now here is a flow super, it still has honey in it, but we have to pull it off because this is our opportunity. If you wait until it's too late, you'll leave your flow super on and then it will be too cold to pull the hive apart and expose your bees. So we're getting it off and you can still have honey in there. If you notice some of that honey is not capped. It's going to be very important to have the bees clean that out for us because we don't want high water content honey in our frames. Now this is known as a fume board. It has like a cottony surface on the interior and we're going to take the regular hive cover off and we're going to take the inner cover off. We're going to spray this down really good. Be liberal with this stuff. And then we're going to put that on the honey super that we want to remove. We need to get the bees out of there. Now this is not something you use if you're going to be in a big hurry. This is the window on the side of a flow hive. So we can see the bees are all on there. And I was thinking it might be fun to put that uh, fume board on top and watch the bees just scurry off of those frames. But they don't do it. They take their sweet time. So again, pull off the roof or the outer cover and the inner cover. Then put the fume board on. And if it's windy, like it is today, you may want to put a, a brick or something on top to help that hold its place. I have several of these. I think I have three or four fume boards, and that allows me to put them in place and go and do it to several hives at one time. Don't be in a hurry. It's going to take about 20 minutes to get these bees out of here. Now, why do you want to get the bees out? Let's say you're going to take this over and put it in a robbing station. Would it matter if you left the bees in there? Yeah, it would, because then they end up having to defend their honey resources and they're going to die on the spot. Now this is one we've showed. This is the medium super that is just under the flow super. 
chocolate block with honey, wall to wall, capped, and the deep box also has capped honey in it. So they're set for winter. Now when you pull that super off, leave your fume board on. That will prevent the bees from chasing it down and chasing you down as you haul it away. The other thing is we want to make sure to scrape off all of that burr comb that is on top and make sure that the edges in particular where the box meets the box make sure that that's all clear so we don't have stuff preventing the cover from making good contact I also scrape off the burr comb and I put it in a bucket this is a stainless steel bucket and I can put that out for cleanup now here we are with another vented uh, feeder shim it has a rapid round feeder in it the bees can get into that rapid round feeder but they can't get up into the cavity of the feeder shim and we're just going to close it up now if I ever need to feed them, I have the feeder in place and I can do that. I'm also putting a polystyrene cover on this one and I do not need an inner cover because remember the bees don't have access to that cavity while that feeder is in place. The other thing is, don't forget to strap everything down. We just had high winds, heavy rains, use ratchet straps. Some people put uh, bricks and things on. Just make sure all your hives are secure. Winter is going to hit. And here we are, look, the number of bees is reduced and uh, we'll be able to pull that off. I'd much rather deal with 20 or 30 bees than two or 300. And remember that the bees you take with that honey super, if you put it on a feeder station, they're gonna think that their hive is under attack when the other bees show up to feed on that honey and clean those up for you. So your bees could die fighting to defend their resources. Again, I'm showing you this uh, medium super that is full wall to wall of honey for winter. This is left on for the bees. Drop that inner cover in there because this one we're going to put a cover straight on without a feeder shim. This is the Flow Hive 2, so it's got a deep box and an unmatched medium box because this is from Man Lake. So if you notice, it overhangs the Flow Hive boxes a little bit, so you can't use the Flow Roof on a medium Man Lake Super because it's just too big. So we put a polystyrene cover on here, we have an inner cover on this one, and there's lots of honey in here. I couldn't lift it. So we have at least 47 pounds in the medium super, and it felt like there's about another 30 or 40 pounds in the deep. So these guys are ready to go for winter. We're going to follow them through the winter with thermal imaging to see where that cluster goes. The other thing is I'm tipping all my flow hives back to their forward level position because we're pulling all the supers off. There's another flow super here on the end, and if it's full, you can still extract uh, by pulling it off and putting it in your... Uh, shed or wherever you like to draw honey from. Now this one had a queen excluder on and look at the pattern that they left behind. And again there's a solid honey bridge underneath here. All of these frames are absolutely full with capped honey and that's great. This is the winter resource that these bees are going to feed on. Last year we had a really long hard winter and the bees did not finish all of the honey that they had stored so they came through great. If you're going to pull any of this honey off, I recommend you wait until spring to do it. That way you know they came through, that they had the resources, and they survived. Again, it's a Flow Hive 8 frame on this one, and we have an 8 frame Man Lake box on top. Again, so now we have to substitute a different cover for it. And here we are at the feeding station. Remember that when you put your Flow Supers out there, here it is in the closed up position, but I want you to pull off that back cover and the upper access cover and I also suggest that you pull out the little plugs that are in the bottom of each flow frame because that's the trough where some of the honey will build up. So those little round biscuits there you want to pull those out because sometimes honey drips in there and if this has a high water content it's going to ferment in your flow frames. Remember we're using the bees to prepare these frames so that we can just store them. So pull out those round plugs, let the bees get in there and clean it up. The upper plugs, not so important. You do want to make sure that all your flow frames are in the closed position, which is the complete cell, so that the bees have full access to it. And then if you want to, you can pull it apart and inspect it. You can see how clean they are. There's a bumblebee in there. Now the bees are roaming freely, and I want you to notice none of the bees are fighting. And that's because we got the bees out of this super before we took it to the feeding station and that's very important if you bring resident bees with it they're going to be fighting for their lives and there's going to be lots of dead bees on the ground underneath of your robbing station so this looks good we're going to clean it up and then what do i do after that i'm just going to put them in the shed i'm going to stack them and i use a thick 
black trash bag as a spacer in between each hive so they move freely and don't stick together. The other thing is they don't put all the flow supers out at the same time, a rash in it. So once the bees have cleaned one up really well, that's when I'll put that one in storage and then I take another one out and put it in its place so the bees can start robbing that one. So that way the bees remember where the robbing station is, where the resources are, and they're going to come out and they're going to clean these up for us. I also have the burr comb again in that bucket that's hanging at the end. I let them clean that up. You can also take the burr comb and put it in a big bowl and use that as your feeding station so the bees have something to climb out on. So if you're going to put out sugar syrup, take some of this burr comb, some of this beeswax, pile that in there, pour your syrup on that and let them clean it up again and then they can climb out and they don't drown. Wasps, everything have gotten together here. If you notice, they're not fighting. The bees are kind of in charge of the cleanup station and you can use them to clean up your wax remnants. You can also put this on hardware cloth or some other screen. So you don't have to, of course, leave it in the bucket. I'm just being lazy and that's what I did. So here we are. You can actually pull the flow super off and then drain the honey inside your house or inside your shed or wherever you like to keep your honey resources. So if you've pulled off your flow supers and they're heavy, you're going to need to test it to make sure there's not a water content issue. So I have this MISCO water percent tester specifically for honey. This unit exists just for testing honey. So it's calibrated. This is what state inspectors use, food inspectors use. So it has the highest tolerance that I could find. It is the most accurate refractometer for testing water percentage in honey. So let's find out what we have. You can also use this right out there by your flow hives. If you've got a hive and you open up one of those frames and you think it's a little too liquid, test it right there and you can stop drawing it off. So here we go, we push it, it brings it up to an ambient temperature inside that little saucer area and here we are at 16.7% water. That's perfect. Anything under 20% is not likely to ferment. So this is fantastic and here's information if you wanna check out the company. This is model number PA201X, made in the United States in the state of Ohio. So misco.com, go check them out, see what the tolerances are. Now here we are, remember, it's only 49 degrees Fahrenheit. We're out in my detached garage and I have flow super sitting in there and we are draining them out into one gallon containers. This looks like it's in slow motion. It is not. That's how slow the honey is actually coming out of this thing. So people like to see honey coming out of flow hives and you also, because you've pulled the supers off and they're on a rack and they're tilted two degrees towards the tubes, you want to make sure and put a cake pan or something like that underneath the vent because there will be some drippings going down the side of your flow frames and uh, the bees won't be in there to clean that up and uh, use that honey. So while you're draining this in your shed or your garage or wherever you collect your honey, you can use your water percent tester. I hope today's video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Have a fantastic weekend.